Hey guys, today's video is on Esku. Esku, you say? Yes, well, I've already done a review on this particular brand. I did a review on the seven inch variation down there, which was 75 pounds, the cheapest head unit that I've ever reviewed. But this one is a 10 inch one, and they've updated the software, and this one is actually compatible with Apple CarPlay. And it is only 112 pounds, which is about $150. So that would make this the cheapest Apple CarPlay head unit well, that's, that's available as far as I'm aware. And it's Android. So this one's two gigabytes of memory. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna unbox it and then I'm gonna set it up in the jukebox test station and then I'm gonna give it a score. Right, let's get on with it. Here it is. Now this actually feels a lot better quality than the seven inch variation that I uh, previously reviewed. The way that it has been put together seems quite strong and uh, it just, it looks quite well finished. It's still plastic, but they have to save money somewhere. I mean, it's only 112 pounds. Now the front here looks like a much more expensive unit. So you've got a mic and reset button up here and then you've got some capacitive touch buttons along this edge. And if we flip it around, You've got your main loom entry point here. You've got uh, connectors here for the additional wiring looms, which I'll go into in a moment. And then you have the FM antenna here and a GPS antenna here. And then we have an ISO connector, so it's gonna go into most uh, cars. A USB port, a GPS antenna, another main loom, but this time with uh, cutoff cables. And then we have a loom which has auxiliary video in, sound and video, an amp trigger wire, a video output for an external monitor, a microphone input, a subwoofer connection, and then we've got the pre-outs. Only two pre-outs again. This was similar to the other uh, Esku, so we don't have four speaker outputs, only two for the uh, pre-outs. Uh, another USB port and then a camera input. And it appears they've also provided a antenna adapter as well. Right, let's get this connected up. So here we are again in front of the jukebox test station with the Esku ready to go. I'm quite interested to see what uh, 112 pounds or $150 is gonna buy you. So let's power it on and see how quickly it starts to load up. There's the Esku logo. And there we go. Not too bad. Uh, it's not the fastest boot up time, but um, not too bad at all. So let's talk about the look and feel. The design of it is pretty sleek, very similar to some of the premium brands of Android based head unit. You do have capacitive touch buttons on the side here. And you can see straight away by looking at the screen that they've actually bothered to put some kind of custom dashboard on here. And it's always great to have a launcher software on your Android head unit because it just makes it look a little bit more like it should be in a car. So straight away on here, we can see we've got some basic menu options on the side here. And then they've given you a widget which shows speed. You have a music app here, and then you have your Bluetooth phone app here. And if we slide across, We've got the radio, car settings, and video. So I'll just tap radio, see what that looks like. And now, a Yeah, so it's very basic, but it does the job. I mean, a radio is a radio, right? And everything is uh, pretty speedy, um, and it, the touch screen works much better than the seven inch version that they had. Let's have a look and see what it's like at loading Spotify because that was something that the other one wasn't brilliant at. Okay, there we go. Okay, so still takes quite a while to load Spotify, but that's only the first time loading it. If you uh, wanted to go back into it, it would be pretty quick. So if I was to exit this now, 
and go back into it. It's pretty quick. It's, it's much quicker in that way, in that sense. So I can tell you straight away that this does feel a lot better than the previous model of Esku that I tested, the seven inch variation. This one, it, it feels faster. It feels better to, uh, to touch and to navigate. It does, uh, it does seem to be pretty good. So I'm just gonna check out the menus now as well. So we go into the settings here, what have we got? Okay, so this is very similar to the seven inch. It's uh, giving you an idea of uh, the, what the ports do, because if I touch one of these, it's gonna say, this is what all the wires do. Now, of course, to actually see any of this stuff, you need to have it plugged in, uh, but it's still cool to have. In system info here, you can see the specification. You can see it's running Android 10.1, probably, and then you've got two gigabytes of RAM, and then you have an A7 with 1.3 gigahertz quad-core processor. The display is running at 600p, which is fine for an Android-based head unit. So from a look and feel perspective, for the money, it's actually really good. Like, it's much more than what I was expecting. From a car integration perspective, it's quite basic. And what are the things that we normally look for? Well, the main one is, of course, steering wheel control. So if we go into the settings here, we can scroll down and we can find steering learn and it will allow you to actually set the buttons on your steering wheel. So that's the main thing, as long as we've got that. Fantastic. Now there are other things that I normally look for with vehicle integration like the ability to set logos. Now this does actually have a logo settings but it's a manual thing like they don't have a list of car brands that you can just choose and run. What you have to do with this one is go and find an image of your car or the car logo and put it on a USB stick and then bring it back here and then make sure it's the right size and shape and then you can load it as a, as a logo for a boot up screen. So it, it, it does exist. It's just a bit more of a ball ache to, uh, to get to it. And then up here we have car settings and it says stuff about uh, using protocol boxes for the canvas decoders so that you can use it for climate controls and stuff like that. Now that would be very, very good, except when you go to set into car, it says no original vehicle setting function. So I'm imagining that the software that they installed on this SKU unit was actually designed for multiple Android units and this one doesn't have the capability. Now I might be wrong, but SKU, you have not supplied instructions for this unit. Now I am a person who doesn't like to read instructions and generally speaking, I, I never do because things are self-explanatory. But this is not self-explanatory and there are no instructions to tell me what to do. So as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't have any additional canvas functionality. But again, this is something that is $112, $150. So it really doesn't matter whether or not it has it or not because you're still dealing with something which is excellent value for money. Now whilst I'm preparing for the next section, which is to talk about the features of the head unit, I'm updating YouTube and you can see here that uh, it's very, very slowly downloading 31 megabytes. Now this comes back to the very same problem that we had with the seven inch SQ and that is that the Wi-Fi capability of these head units is very poor. And what I mean by that is this head unit, you can see up here, the signal is about half um, and uh, the router is literally right next to this jukebox test station. Uh, there's no reason that this signal should be so low. There is no reason why this download should be going so slow. Um, it's simply because it's got a very, very bad Wi-Fi chipset. So Esku, advice, please change the Wi-Fi. I know that you've uh, uh, got a low budget because it is a very uh, cost-effective head unit, but Wi-Fi is a given. Like You do need to transfer data whilst in the car sometimes, and uh, that needs to be fixed. Now features wise, obviously you have the ability to actually watch YouTube and use other video apps because it is Android as you can with every Android unit. And it does work quite well for these features. Now remember it is a little bit slower than the bigger Android head units because the cost is low. So just bear that in mind, it's still good. Like it's, it's still a pretty decent unit. But it's all about the Apple CarPlay, which is apparently included within this very low priced unit. So I'm gonna go and try that now. So I have my uh, trusty iPhone, which I've been using for these tests. I'm gonna plug it in. We'll see what happens. 
Okay. Oh, look, it's gone straight to Z Link. Oh, Stuart's iPhone. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, and it's playing music. All right, that's pretty cool. Okay. $150 head unit, which has Apple CarPlay. Yes, it's for your wire, it's not wireless, but then in fairness, you'd be paying hundreds of dollars for a big brand named unit that would be able to do this. So that is pretty damn cool. And uh, let's have a look at this. Because it's CarPlay, it's using the phone's data and the phone's processor and memory, etc. It's a phone specification. So this is gonna be very, very quick indeed, simply because it's not the head unit that's running all these apps, it's the phone. And that means that you're gonna bypass all the slowness of this head unit because you literally are doing everything from, uh, from this unit. Yeah, now that, that makes it worth the money straight away. I just actually connected my uh, Android phone up to see uh, how that worked and uh, amazingly it does actually have Android Auto as well. Um, that is astonishing. Look at this. I can access all of my phone's apps on here. Waze is here. I've got my Spotify playlist here as well. That is amazing. From a connectivity perspective, this unit really doesn't have much for me to talk about at all. It doesn't even have four channels of pre-outs. Uh, so you only have two channels of pre-outs left and right. So it's not going to be useful in that kind of situation. That being said, $150, what do you want? I mean, it's, it's still a very good unit um, with missing features that you probably wouldn't use anyway. Now let's talk about sound quality and control. So it's got the same five channel graphic equalizer that we had on the seven inch Esku as well. So it's exactly the same audio chipset and it sounds exactly the same as well. And that was okay. Okay, I'm not going to sing praises because it is what it is. It's a very, very basic setup. At the end of the day, it's gonna play your music. You do get some control over how it sounds. Now I don't think it's gonna sound anything like the high-end Android head units, which sound amazing with their uh, high-end audio chipsets and their DSP. This is not gonna sound anything like that, okay? But if you're not that fussed, uh, then it will sound good enough to listen to. Okay, let's give it some scores. So from a look and feel perspective, it does look shiny. The screen looks vibrant and bright, and they have made a good effort with the launcher dashboard. Plus the fact that you get the capacitive touch buttons as well. So from a look and feel perspective, I, I would give it a seven. From a speed perspective, it's not bad. It's not great either, but it's certainly a little bit faster than the other Esku unit. So I'm going to give it a six. From a vehicle integration perspective, there's not really a great deal to shout about. It got steering wheel controls and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna give it a four. So from a features perspective, it does all the standard stuff that an Android head unit does, but it also does Apple CarPlay and Android Auto at $150, which is amazing. I'm going to score this unit an eight for features. For a connectivity perspective, uh, pretty much where this thing falls down, there's really nothing that you can connect it to. A few analog connections on it, doesn't even have four channels of pre-outs. I'm gonna give the unit a two. From a sound quality perspective, whilst it doesn't sound bad, it really doesn't come close to anything else that I've tested from a quality perspective. It just has a very basic sound processing unit, which is uh, not very loud either. So I'm gonna score it a four. Now, from a value for money perspective, you're talking about a head unit which isn't overly slow, but it has premium features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And for that reason, I'm going to score this an eight for value for money because you're really getting some proper stuff for the $150 or £112 that you would be paying for this unit. 